Hey guys, Kyle Millen here with Stillen, and today we're going to get into a topic that we briefly touched on in our last Toyota Tacoma tech series on our cold air intake system. In that tech series, I talked briefly about the impact that we saw on the different octane fuels for the truck that we were testing at that time. So this video is going to be all about the impact that the 87 octane fuel had in the California 91 octane fuel. So we're going to get into the differences that we saw and the end results of why you may or may not want to choose a different kind of fuel for your truck. All right, so let's get right into it. What is octane? What does it mean? What's it symbolize? Simply put, the higher the octane number, the more resistant that fuel is to pre-ignition or pre-detonation. When we have an engine, when we look inside of an engine, we basically can break it down to a combustion chamber, a piston, a spark plug, an intake valve, and a fuel uh, injector. We're gonna let that air in, we're gonna shoot in a certain amount of fuel, but ultimately, we're gonna control that explosion from the spark plug, and that all boils down to ignition timing. Well, if we have a poor quality fuel inside of that system, and that fuel pre-ignites before we wanna control it with our spark plug, that's when bad things happen. So we're literally talking about explosions, right? I mean, it is literally the piston comes up, explosion occurs, pushes the piston back down. If we fire that explosion before the piston is ready, then you're basically hammering the head of that piston, sending a shock wave through the piston, through the conrod, down into the crankshaft, and out into the entire powertrain of the vehicle. Now, this is really going to come up with damaged uh, crank bearings, uh, damaged ring lands, pistons, uh, things of that nature. That's really where you're going to start to see the uh, damage caused by pre-ignition or pre-detonation. So again, we really, really, really need to control how that all works. And the best way to do that is with a good quality of fuel. We want a controlled burn. We want a fuel that we can burn slowly, but also efficiently. So we wanna get a higher octane fuel in that combustion chamber in order to give us that best result. We're talking so much about this because this is a turbo four cylinder with a relatively high compression ratio. 11 to one compression ratio is quite high when you're talking about a turbo vehicle or forced induction vehicle. We've been developing supercharger kits now since the 90s and back then we used to run nine to one compression engines, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half. Uh, around 2009, the new 370Z came out. I believe that one's about a 10 and a half compression ratio. So we start getting up quite high when we start talking about 11 to one compression ratio. And what does that mean? Well, it's basically the amount of squeeze that's going on inside of the combustion chamber. So you're really squeezing everything nice and tight. And the more you squeeze it, you're still gonna get that combustion. It's gonna be a more violent combustion. Right, So again, it all boils down to controlling that combustion, controlling that burn so that we don't have any damage down the line. Now, modern day engines are extremely intelligent. They're equipped with a lot of different sensors, uh, literally called knock sensors, that are listening for any kind of a detonation or knock that's not controlled. So what the vehicle is gonna do, if it starts to sense that this knock is occurring, it's gonna dial back your, your timing and it's gonna add more fuel two things that are gonna rob horsepower. So by dialing out timing and adding fuel, basically the engine is saying, hey, I'm seeing an increase in uh, temperatures or an increase in conditions within my cylinder that I don't like and it's causing detonation. So I'm gonna alter those conditions. It's adding fuel because fuel is not just a, a burning agent, but it also actually aids in cooling. So you, you wanna add fuel to cool that cylinder temperature a little bit, and then you're also going to retard the timing just to prevent any pre-detonation or pre-ignition from occurring. So both of those conditions together are going to hurt your power. And that's exactly what we saw on the dyno. So when the truck came in, we found out that it was filled with 87 octane. Now, fortunately, it had very, very little fuel in it. There was only about an eighth of a tank or less. So we drove it down to the local gas station. We topped it all the way up, filled it all the way up with 91 octane, put it up on the dyno. And by the time we actually got everything strapped up, we did four dyno poles. And those four dyno poles were virtually identical. They were anywhere from 192 to 194 horsepower, which, you know, if you know anything about dynos, those are identical numbers. Um, so we're gonna use 194 horsepower as our 87 octane uh, horsepower output. Once we got through those four dyno poles and the, the fuel lines in the truck started to consume what little 87 octane was still left in it, 
uh, it started to burn all that away. Then we started seeing incremental gains all the way up to 214 horsepower, where we saw a 20 horsepower gain just by getting that fresh 91 octane fuel in. The only modification that the truck had at the time was a cat back exhaust system, but that was on when we put the truck on. So 87 octane and 91, both tested under the exact same conditions. It was a 20 horsepower difference. Now again, that's because the ECU was seeing something within that combustion cycle that it didn't like. So it began retarding timing and adding more fuel to compensate and get rid of the condition that it saw that it wasn't happy with. As we got rid of that poor quality fuel and we got into the 91 octane fuel, the engine and the ECU said, okay, now I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm able to produce the most power possible. Now let's get into some of the different types of fuels that are out there. Cause I'm talking about 87 and 91, but there are some places in the, in the U S that have as low as 85 octane fuel, as high as 93, or even here in California, we can actually get hundred octane at the, at the uh, pump. So why do you want to avoid both of these octane fuels? So 85 octane fuel is really not suitable for a forced induction system. Ford will actually void the warranty on your EcoBoost engine if you have 85 octane fuel in the uh, system. So if you blow your engine, have a problem, whatever it may be, go to the dealership, they sample your fuel and you've got 85 octane in there, your, your warranty is void. It says that in the owner's manual. Uh, now, if you've got 100 octane fuel, that should be great, right? If 91's good, 93 is better, 100 must be great. It's actually counterintuitive. Because that is even more resistant to burn, in order to take full, uh, in order to optimize that fuel as much as possible, you have to advance your timing significantly. So if you're not advancing your timing significantly, that uh, ignition timing that's preset from the factory is not calibrated for 100 octane fuel. So not only are you gonna be wasting money because 100 octane fuel is 10 or $12 a gallon, it's very, very expensive, you're actually gonna be making less horsepower. So there's no point in running 100 octane fuel unless you're able to calibrate your engine for that octane fuel. So what's the end result? Stillen is only gonna recommend 91 or 93 octane fuel for the 2024 Toyota Tacoma. We've definitely seen that a 20 horsepower difference is telling us that that ECU, that engine is not happy running a low grade fuel. And when you really break it down, we went to the AAA website to see what the average fuel costs are. And on average, the difference in fuel cost between 87 and 91 or 93 octane is anywhere from 40 cents to uh, $1. So at the end of the day, on an 18 gallon fuel tank, you're really talking about saving seven bucks maybe as much as 18 if you live in a state where there's a $1 difference in, in fuel cost. But again, spread throughout the course of the year, if you're filling up every two or three weeks, you're really not saving a lot of money and all you're doing is putting more wear and tear into your engine and shortening the lifespan of that engine. So we're only gonna recommend 91 or 93 octane. If you run a still and true control, when they become available, we are gonna require that you run a 91 or higher octane fuel. Uh, because we are increasing boost pressure, we are going to require that our customers uh, run 91 or, or higher octane fuel. It's just the only way to get the most power, but also the, uh, the longevity out of that engine as well. We hope that this video was informational for you. We're not trying to sell you anything on this one. We're just trying to share some of our experience gathered over hundreds of dyno poles now and let you know what we're finding when we put these trucks to the test. So far, these trucks are performing extremely well. We've had quite a few of them through the shop already. They're really responding well to all the performance upgrades that we're throwing on them. And we're really looking forward to more products in the future. If you have any more questions or if we skipped anything that maybe you'd like us to dive into more in the next video, please leave a note in the comments section. Otherwise, make sure you subscribe to stay tuned to all the new Tacoma parts that we have coming down the line. In the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great day.